Hi, welcome to Finding the Voices. Today we have yet another episode for 1001 Thagachari, a gratitude project for Manipur. Um, and today we have the 15th participant and we still have 986 more to go. Our goal is to meet 1001 unique people and talk about gratitude um, for people around us, identify people in Manipur who inspires us, and also share about uh, people at the global um, or causes which inspires us. So today we have a very, very special guest, Susanna. And Susanna Brahmachari Mayum is a PhD scholar of School of Communication from Auckland University of Technology, joining us from New Zealand. Hi, Susanna. Hello, Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you so much. Yeah, so you are joining us from New Zealand. Yes, and yes. You're telling me it's winter now while it is summer here in Maryland. <laughs> I know it's it's very cold. It's like my hands are literally freezing because I was doing some writing up thing. So it's very, very cold here. Wow. <laughs> All right, let me share a picture of Susanna. Yeah, there am I. All right, and Susanna says, I find happiness in the simplest things. So to start with, we are going to find a little bit about Susanna. Um, how about you start with telling us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, um, your background, and all the fun stuff. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much again for having me on your amazing show, Ije. And... To everyone out there, I am Susanya, and I am from Imphal Huangkai, and I'm currently a PhD scholar in AUT, that is Auckland University of Technology in New Zealand. Um, this is my second year here, and hopefully I can finish my PhD as soon as possible and get back home and start working on the research that I'm actually doing right now. And about me, um, I did my initial schooling in uh, Maria Montessori until about class two. And after that, uh, I wanted to, um, my sisters and my brothers, so they had all gone to Calcutta, so I wanted to go with them. So from, I think about, yeah, class three, I went to Calcutta and then I did my schooling in Calcutta. And after that, our parents, they had to move from Calcutta to way back home again. So we moved to Mysore. I did my graduation in Mysore. And after that, I did my master's in Mysore. And then there was a point where my dad was like, enough of st us staying you know, out of, the, out of the state. So we need to get back home. And by the time I got back home, there was this um, um, exam thing that was going on for Durdashan Kendra Imphal. And then my dad was like, I think you should give it a try because I did a uh, master's and grads in journalism and communication. So it was kind of like my stream. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll go give it a try. And when I went there, um, I kind of got selected as a reporter and a uh, interviewer and a presenter for Doordashan. So I worked in Manipur uh, for almost about two years for Doordashan, it, but it was on a um, contract basis. So it was a very good experience for me because um, even though I'm a Manipur, I never had a chance to literally grow up in Manipur doing the things that every local people do. Um, the only time I would spend in Manipur was during vacations and, um, and it would hardly be for about a month or hardly a month so it was a very good experience for me to work in Manipur and especially that was for the Krishi Krik Kendra so that was for the agricultural department and we would go to different locations in the villages in the rural areas in the mountains and everything and to to be able to understand Manipur on a on a deeper level you know on a ground root level it was the best experience ever and I saw how beautiful Manipur was and it's not just that when we see Switzerland in the photos and when we see London or something you know you know they are developed countries but then when you go back to Manipur and then you experience all those stuff even just the normal morning when you're in the mountain and you look at the city it looks so beautiful you know 
So it's right there with us, but then we never see that um, until and unless we literally go and explore every places in Manipur. And that's what I learned from my two year um, in Manipur when I was working for Dordashan. And after that, um, I just wanted to explore a little bit more. And I thought that um, this is a good time for me to start applying for in different universities for a PhD. And that's when I did. And it was it was very difficult. It was very, very difficult. And but then I got through a lot of universities in uh, the UK. So the, one of my favorite one was the Cardiff University. But the fees was crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, forget about me able to afford it even my parents couldn't afford it so i i did speak to them but then it was something that they said oh no this is not something that we can do i applied for scholarships i couldn't even get through any of the scholarships there was one scholarship that i got through but it was and so in indian money it was about two lakhs a year but the fees was 20 lakhs so it was like it just didn't balance out and yeah so i kind of gave up and then, uh, so I went back to Bangalore again. So I started working for um, a TV uh, channel over there as a public relation officer for about three months. And then I got an email from the university that I'm here in. And then they were like, um, are you? So we really like your proposal. Are you able to talk to us? We can have a Skype uh, conversation and all the stuff. And then when I found out that in New Zealand for PhD students, um, you don't pay international fees. That's one good thing, and it's um, and you're able to work full time. That's another good thing, and yeah. So I was so I I am paying um, local fees, which is not too much. It's about three to four lakhs a year, which is quite reasonable when you're doing a PhD and when you are in a different country. But yeah, so here I am because of that. And it's not just because it's cheap, it's, it was cheap for me, but my professors and everyone basically here in New Zealand, they're really, really nice. And if you think about it, New Zealand is kind of like the developed version of Manipur, except in Manipur, we don't have sea, but here it's everything. So you have the mountains, they have the rivers, they have these amazing lakes, people are amazing. And they have this indigenous group in New Zealand too, which we also have in Manipur. So it's like basically kind of the same. But yeah, so this is... So you our, felt quite at home. Yes, except the winter is a little bit harsh, <laughs> which okay. I feel it every day. So it kind of pinches me every day. But apart from that, everything else is just amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So you are out of Manipur from third grade, you said? Yes, yes. Wow, wow. So um, during your work experience with Duderson, you mm -hmm. said you traveled a lot in Manipur. Yes. So yes. which other places can you elaborate and share um, a little bit about so your work? We went to uh, Kaching, we went to Churachanpur, we went to Mao. So it was like one whole day trip. So like different, different rural areas, which I would have, where I would have never gone to if I was not working for Doordashan, you know, because when you have a van, when you're sitting in a van and then you have the Doordashan sign, you can go in anywhere, basically. So that's the good part of being a reporter or a media journalist, kind of like a thing, you know. So we would go to all these places and... um interview and talk to the people the farmers so there would be farmers who are like who we wouldn't even know but then they, we would be buying their products from the market ima market or somewhere in manipur you know but you wouldn't meet them face to face so you wouldn't know what they have been going through and then when we go to a market we only see oh we want to buy carrots and then we just see oh this carrot is not good i don't want to buy from this person but when you go on a on a very personal level talk to them they have to go through all those stuff. They have to put those insect, you know, what do you call those? Those, um, uh, I don't pesticides. know, chemicals. Yeah, pesticides. Yeah. <laughs> so to kill those, you know, ger animals and you know, germs and all the stuff to keep the fruit or the vegetables healthy. So they have to go through all those stuff. So I feel as if not. It does not. It doesn't matter whether. Um, uh, whatever, whatever, however you are, you know. But then to understand something. For, for example, I kind of understood a lot when it came to when it came to me working as a journalist and talking to the um, farmers and everything. So you know what they go through. So in winter, we we are still enjoying all the the hangam, the mustard leaves and everything back at home. 
but for these people, for us to enjoy, they have to go through a lot of stuff, you know? They have to put, uh, they have to farm the hangams properly. And that's how they kind of pluck all the hangams from the farm and then they put it in the market and that's how we enjoy the food and we relish the food. So the things that they go through, so I kind of understood all those stuff that the farmers go through when I was working for Doordashan, you know? Yeah, and another so very, another that very definitely would make you and everybody, you know, like I think it's a different perspective you get yes. when you grow at the ground level and exactly, exactly. you know people try to bargain and things yeah. like that. So you would really think twice and you know, all the hard work they have put. Yeah, obviously that's you would, you and, you wouldn't bargain at an H and M or a Zara. <laughs> no right, <more>. right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yes. you were going to tell me something. Yeah. So one weird thing was that it was. My Manipuri is very fluent, so uh, I have never, even though I didn't study in Manipuri, I never had a problem speaking in Manipuri or uh, I, there was not, no problem at all. But I understood that my Manipuri is, Manipuri is really, really messed up when I started working for Durdashan. And that's when I, I would say I would give kudos to one of my um, senior journalists over there. So he was my mentor and then he would literally scold me. He would be like, I don't know what what happened to you. You know, you're because your Manipuri is so weird, and because when you're working for Durdashan, you need to have that standard of Manipuri. You know, <laughs> and it was so when I was speaking to the farmers, even though the farmers would understand that I was speaking in a very casual tone, but then there would be some someone who would be like looking at me, like I think this person is being disrespectful, but I am not being right. disrespectful. You know, but it's just the, just the tone, which. I, it kind of changed a lot after me working with their dash. So, right. so that kind of changed. But it was very unusual in the beginning because for me, it was like, I am speaking in a very nice way. I am not a very bad person. But I don't know why is this guy giving me the looks, you know? So that, that, that was that exchange was there in the beginning. But after almost about six months, it kind of wore off. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely understand, you know, where you're coming from because yeah. uh, my mother is in literature and she she is like one of my biggest critic when oh, I okay. post in my Taylon and okay. you know I thought like you like oh I speak very nice my Taylon but she would be like no 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 you have to tone it down and be more respectful exactly. and you know. <laughs> Yeah, English is not a very good language, you know, because it doesn't teach you all the stuff. It's just in the expression and how you speak the language. But yeah, it's not as critical as the indigenous languages all over the world. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so um, is there anything else you want oh, to yeah. speak before we go to our um, main segment of gratitude? Yes. So I think I would like to speak a little bit about my research. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, what, what, you know, what are you focused on? Okay, so uh, the topic of my research is theater and drag identity, a comparative study of gender performance traditions in Manipur and in New Zealand theater. So what my study, so what I'm going to be doing is that, so the study will basically develop like a comparative understanding of how the theater tradition is so different and yet so similar both in the Western and in the Eastern part of the world but mm -hmm. it's specific to the reference of Manipur and in New Zealand. So I'm not looking into India, Indian theatre, but my research is just in Manipur and in New Zealand here. So which is also really good because I'm able to bring Manipur on an international platform, which is amazing for my research and also for the people of Manipur and also the kind of the particular section that I am researching in. So, yeah, that's a very good opportunity yeah, you it, know, for the people of New Zealand and the university to learn different aspects and culture yeah. and, you know, from Mani off Manipur. So it'll exactly. be a good exposure for Manipur. Exactly. So so what I, so what I would be doing is literally getting, um, talking to performers about how they um, go through on a day-to-day -day basis or about how, so they kind of have like their a public um, identity and mm -hmm. uh, stage identity, you know. So I'm able to understand what is exactly going on in in that particular space. So we have this term called liminal, liminality. So liminality basically means that you're given like a space wherein, for example, my room is my liminal space. So I can do whatever I want to do in my room. But the moment I get out of my room, I'm kind of trying to adapt it to the roommates that I have in the house. 
you know so 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 the same thing happens to um so the same thing is also given to the drag performers or the um the performers back in manipur you know so it's like they have their own space wherein um they are able to talk about their issues they are talk able to talk give give like a social message but then so that is the particular tradition theater tradition that i'm talking about here and which is also very nice because in manipur basically when we have the shumang leela so what happens in there is that they talk about um public issues they talk about cultural issues they talk about political issues so they kind of help the people of manipur understand all these issues that we i mean that is going on in the society on a, on a different level so so it's like when someone is reading a newspaper there are some people who read newspaper and there are lots of people who don't read newspapers right but then mm-hmm. in manipur when a shumang leela is happening in your locality there are at least about 80 to 90 pe- 90% of the of the uh, pers- people of the locality they're going to go and watch the shumang leela so the kind of information that they get from the drama the theater yeah, exactly. and then yeah. the kind of information that they get from the newspaper it, you know yes you understand newspapers yes you know but that the other one has more impact because you're literally able to see that in front of you and then they're you know disguised as a uh, female so there's a lot of things that's going on but yeah so to understand um because we we like i'm sure that when you were when you were young and when you were back at home there would be shumang leela um happening every now and then in every locality right and you could literally go and watch and then so you've been living with that since when when for example since when i was young i've seen that you know but right now when i'm writing on it it is so difficult because it is not as easy as it is as it seems and the same thing here i have to go to um gay clubs here to do my research which a lot of people think that oh it's amazing how you can do like go for like a um, go to the gay club and then you do your research there and then you get paid for the drinks that you drink you get paid for the food that you eat yes it is amazing but then again to get to know these people on a very ethnographic level again that's a very um it's kind of uh, scary at the same time but again very exhilarating again you know so it's kind of there's an up and down uh, uh with the feelings that you get when you meet these people but they are this amazing people that I've have met have ever encountered in my life so yeah my research is taking me to places which is amazing yeah <laughs> yeah so that's awesome so how did you um you know what inspired you to propose on the topic of your research Yes so it happened back when i was doing my um masters so i was so when i was doing my masters uh so we are supposed to give like a, a masters thesis right before you complete your masters and so that time i was kind of quite drawn to this because um i kind of thought that a lot of people talk about uh the performance of um india as like a very because they say that india is very expressive when it comes to performance and sports and all these things but then when it comes to manipur a lot of people yes they talk about it only only those who know about it talk about it but then i don't think so it's really really out there on your face no it's not there you know yeah so, definitely i mean when people represent india i don't think manipur or for that matter the north east is represented yeah. because you know like sumang leela is so so different than exactly, uh, many yeah. of what other people would perceive you know yes, for india exactly. so yeah i'm very excited so you <laughs> got inspired and you said you yes. thought that it should have a space yeah it should have a space and then i know that there are so for example for um for people out there doing uh, so i understand that a lot of preference is given to science and engineering and everything but i felt as if um, i could be the one in a million and then try to do something that a lot of people don't do and be able to help um the, our society basically and also the the kind of society the um, uh the, the what do you say the kind of society that a, a lot of people don't you know basically try to make the society understand that it's not just men and women in our society you know there are other sex other gender too in our society and then everyone should live as if you know you shouldn't even bother as long as you're doing your own thing and as long as i have my own thing to think about I mean I shouldn't care about whether that person is um homosexual person or a lesbian or whatever of that matter you know 
So I wanted to bring about a small change, but I know that if I'm doing it right now, maybe someone else will follow what I'm doing. And then my thesis would be like a guide for them again, you know, in future. So that was what I thought. And yeah, <laughs> it kind of led me here, so <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Wow, no, that's very interesting. And, yeah. um, you know, it's good, like you said, you know, um, that you're able to follow your dreams and uh, go into a career line, which your heart is in line with. Yeah, uh, so yeah, best wishes. And I would look forward to read all about your thesis when it Thank comes you. out. <laughs> I'm very excited too. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's go to our uh, main segment of gratitude. Um, and, um, you know, um, I would like to start um, by asking you to think about people in your personal space whom you want to express your gratitude and talk about them um, and honor them okay. in our show. Um, I think it goes. It even goes without thinking because the the only people that I would be very, very, very grateful is my parents. And so basically, the, the position and the place and the situation, everything that I'm here today, is because of my parents. And I think I would I would thank them even more because you know back in um, I think it was way back in. Uh, 1998 1999 timing when in manipur all the schools you know there was this crazy um uh, buns and everything that was going on you know so right. the schools wouldn't operate so so nothing would basically operate and then a lot of people those you know in the, so we wouldn't go to school at all because there's this bun keep, that keeps happening every now and then there's a shooting going on every now and then so i i feel very privileged to have my mom and dad as my mom and dad because because of them um we they were able to send us to calcutta to do our studies to 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 study there and then to be able to um understand uh what do you say different cultures in calcutta and things like that because you know when you are in just in class three you're about say six or seven years old and then they kind of exposed um they kind of exposed us so it's not just me and the family it, kind of, it is my sisters and my brothers who so basically everyone no one stayed at home and then i remember when um i think it was when i was in class three or something we would have to write letters every day uh, sorry every month to our parents back at home and then my uncle was staying with us so yeah so we would have to write letters and everything and then we still my mom still has the letters and when she sees those letters she literally cries and then we were like what the hell were we writing all this while you know because it's just it's just so crazy and obviously you're in class three and class four and you don't know what you're writing you know but you're just saying mama i miss you so much come come to calcutta i don't want to come home because they're they're they, they, they're they shooting so it's like broken english but then you kind right. of understand it's very cute you know yeah and uh, they kind of and you know we are five of us in the house and then my mom and my dad they never tra treated anyone lesser or more you know so it's everything has been so good in the family and then when we used to speak to our mom she used to literally cry because no one is back at home it's just my mom my dad and basically no one you know so and to ha to have sent all of us um in in calcutta because so that we can get good education because it is good for our future and it's not that they are very rich or something. So, but right. then they're still trying their best to keep us, give us everything that, that you know, they would not get or any other kids in our society wouldn't get. So I feel very privileged to uh, have them, and I feel very privileged because that time I was like, oh, my parents don't love me. That's why they sent me to Calcutta. <laughs> you know, but it is not like that. You know, right. So I feel very, very, very privileged um, and very grateful to them for giving us if not everything, but everything that we needed to come here and to stand right here and say that, yes, I'm very proud that I'm standing here in New Zealand and I'm doing a research in New Zealand. I'm doing all these things that some people would kill to do, you know? But sometimes I feel that when I'm like, I have a very bad day and it's like, I hate my life. And then my friends are like, you know what? You should not say that. Everyone goes through a lot of stuff, but then how you are today at this at this particular stage it's it kind of you know makes you the person you are and it kind of so you need to be very grateful of of, of where you are at the moment because whatever that you went through shaped up your 
it usually shapes your future. And then I know how my parents has gone through. They, they have gone through a lot of stuff in their life. They about money, financial stuff, personal, even even personal stuff. You know, so we've seen all those stuff when we were growing up, and to able to see them still together, even after all these things that they they've basically gone through, is an amazing experience. And yeah, I am always grateful to my parents and especially i would say especially my mom because yes my dad has provided us with all the financial things and everything and love and support and everything and my mom because she sacrificed a lot when she, after she got married and everything because you know how they got married at a very younger age and stuff like that you know so she sacrificed a lot of things and sometimes my mom she says that i feel as if you are the younger version of me but then you are doing <laughs> you are doing everything that i've always wanted to do and i would never stop you guys from doing all the stuff because i was restricted when i got married i couldn't because my mom she wanted to be a teacher she already became a teacher but then she couldn't because of the in law you know how it, it goes mm -hmm. on right yeah mm -hmm. so yeah so she's giving us the life that she wanted to have got but, it yeah so it has so it it wouldn't even happen in just as even if you have so much of money and everything and things like that but they have gone through a lot of stuff in their life and you wouldn't believe my dad is he is very hard working he is he is crazy <laughs> he is just crazy because my at home they're all business minded and i think it's just me and one of my sister who's like into academia but yeah so even if you don't get much help in that sphere financial wise all good you know but mm -hmm. my dad when he grew up he grew up you know how a um, uh, uh, brahmin in manipur a brahmin mm -hmm. family in manipur usually has like a small hotel and everything you know mm -hmm. but the same thing for them too so he kind of grew up uh, you know making tea and washing glasses and things like that and then but the situation where he is right now um and how he was before when he was very young it kind of makes us makes us like want to cry because he's been through so much but then now he stands tall because of all of us and he's so proud of all of us you know that yes at least even though i used to um wash uh, cups and utensils and everything when i was growing up at least my my daughters and my sons they're not doing that you know so there's so this, like, a, like a pop pop pump yes yes like hotel like not, not hotel. like a restaurant you no, know no, no, high no, no, restaurant, no, no. but okay, like no, no. Pum, cha and, exactly. bora and all those exactly. okay got it uh, so you know when people come up come you know so it's basically like they have they didn't have a very good life but then he was very hard working and everything and he saw all those stuff in life so he didn't want us to go through all that so one very um, funny thing that i'll tell you when i first came to new zealand um so you know how uh, there's like any pe anyone can work anywhere here right and mm -hmm. then people don't treat you bad if you are a janitor or if you are a sweeper right. or something. People have respect for, you know, yeah. <laughs> everybody, like they have respect for any kind of job. Yep. Yeah. So when I first came in here, I wanted to try out everything. I'm very adventurous in that way. You know, so I basically want to try everything. If, if it's good, I will go ahead. If it's not good, I'll stop. So I started working as a um, uh, F&B waitress, so mm -hmm. food and beverage waitress. And um, it was amazing because I learned how to make um, long black. So I think long black is like your Americano, you know. So it's long black here in New Zealand. And I kind of may learn how to make cappuccino, um, flat white, and espresso, and things like that, which was amazing. But it was basically me as a waitress. And when I told my dad, he got really freaked out. <laughs> he got freaked out. <laughs> because he's like, what? I did all that for you to go to New Zealand and study. And what are you doing over there? <laughs> I mean, yes, I understand it's the, it's the, you know, different thinking and stuff like that. But then he right. didn't understand in the beginning, but I was getting my own pocket money, which was amazing. Then I didn't have to literally ask for money back at home, which was also very good, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm here on a bank loan. Uh, so I don't usually ask a lot of money from home. If it's like an emergency or something, only that's the, that's the only time I ask money from home. Otherwise I have my own um, work thing going on here. But I worked as a waitress for three months because I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> but it was a good experience, you know, but my dad got really freaked out. So, yeah, um, I, I really, really thank my parents for um, 
giving birth to me i know they've had a crazy time because i am very rebellious and very adventurous and they get crazy when they see that <laughs> and yeah so it's so just let my parents. Me, <laughs> yeah so i think now is a good time for me to share a picture of your parents which you had sent it yes yeah, they're there. All right. <laughs> All right. So what uh like what what is the name of your dad and your mom? Okay. My my dad's name is uh Surja Mani, but no one knows him as Surja Mani, but everyone knows him as Naubi. So <laughs> yeah, and my mom's name is Nehalata. She's from wow. Sindhumai and my dad yeah, so we are from Wankai. Yeah, both of them look very young. Your mom looks yeah. like your sister. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she would be yeah, excited. That, that's very awesome. So right now, what what does your dad do? So um, we have a advertising um, kind of like a company back at home. So it's called Sharma Enterprises. It's everywhere in the street. So they have these big billboards and uh, uh, things like that in the in the in the Infa city itself. So you have these road dividers, right? So especially yeah. during um, uh, like festivals in Manipur and things like that, uh, they 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 have these road dividers where um, so they have these billboards on the road dividers wherein they put advertisements and things like that, right? That kind of lights up the whole city during mm -hmm. festivals. So they, so my brother is basically doing that, and my dad is helping him out. So my dad is kind of like he doesn't want to get too much in, involved in all these works anymore because he wants kind of like he's half retired but half still working <laughs> because he is very, you know, ambitious, and then he he still wants to work, you know. So but everyone's like, you know what, you've you've done enough, you've had enough, you just retire, and then we have been like you guys need to like literally go for like a trip or something and then don't think about all these things but then he still wants to you know um help my brother with the whole advertising thing so which is going amazing and yeah and my mom is uh basically she is a yoga instructor not exactly wow. not exactly instructor but she kind of that's yoga every so you have like um community halls in manipur right and then wherein yeah. they, they are encouraged to, to do yoga and things like that right so that's awesome. so she started as that but then she took that on a, a, a to a different level wherein she keeps going to meet baba ram dev and then his uh you know society and all those stuff so she keeps doing that which is amazing for her after she all that she's quite spiritual through. yes she is very 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 spiritual which is like totally our opposite but yeah it works in the family when you have a lot of differences cool so tagachari for baba and mama yeah. <laughs> from suzania that that's so awesome thank you so much yeah i really love it when um people talk with so much of um, love for their mom and dad exactly. and, uh, one of my, you know, very first project when I started doing, um, that was when I just started working. Um, I started, my first project was called Imul. And the okay. full form is Ima Ipa Mitna Uber Laini. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so, no, no. And yeah, it was a time where I felt, you know, like how you have shared um, that the realization that we are where we are because of all the sacrifices you know they have um, given in and it's like you said you know they're not rich yeah. um, but because of the conflict situation and also their dream you know in education knowing that it's only education which is going to you know bring you up um, yeah, in the long run, yeah. Yeah, in the long run, um, you know, they would send out. And I think, like, you know, many people are in similar cases like yours where, you know, they have to live home at a very, very young age exactly. just to get education. Yeah. And and then, you know, I'm sure at your age you had that struggle, you know, in adapting and being away from home. And exactly. so, yeah, so thank you so much for sharing. I think there's thank a lot so of takeaway in your sharing in terms of, um, how parents, you know, sacrifices. And then the second is the importance of education. Yeah. 
and you know what length people have to go through to educate somebody um, exactly. when you're not getting it um, in in your in our own state in Manipur. Exactly. And the third, I think, what I really caught upon and what I loved uh, you mentioning was your parents' value in raising all your siblings yeah. without any, you know, like like with gender equality. Like yes. no, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, moving on um, to the next one. Okay. Um, how about you share your gratitude and nominate somebody at the level, um, you know, of Manipur and uh, speak a little bit about that? Um, yeah. So, I feel as if, apart from my parents, uh, the person that I would be really, really grateful to would be um, Ichi Daina Putsangbam. So um, I don't know, but sometimes it's very weird for me when I, whenever I say this surname because I'm not able to pronounce it properly. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but yeah. So it's your Dinah. Um, I got I uh, so so when I was working for the uh, sorry no I was working for ISTV for like a internship when I was um, doing my bachelor no when I was doing my masters because we have to do like a short term internship too. And so during that period, I kind of, um, so there was this Tamo, his name is Jeet. So he kind of, so I kind of talked, spoke to him and I said, you know what, I'm doing research on so and so. And then I really need someone who would be able to help me with my research. And then he said, he kind of, and then he hooked me up with uh, Ichi Daina. So that's how everything started. So it's like, uh, I kind of, I think I, uh, I messaged her on uh, Facebook you know those times you couldn't you couldn't even hide the messages and everything so it was all good so it's like i send you i send someone a message and then they're just able to see that and instead it doesn't go and hide messages or uh, unread messages and things like that so um she kind of replied back uh, immediately and she said that okay i can help you out and everything which is very weird because you don't you don't receive that kind of like um treatment from a stranger you know and i'm like asking <laughs> and i'm asking her that i need her help for the shumang lila things and i'm asking her that how things work out because i've just seen that i've just seen shumang lila when i was growing up but i don't know anything about it i can see that there are uh, you know people uh, guys disguised as women and then there are singers disguised as uh, female singers you know so all these things but then i always found it kind of um similar to the uh, elizabethan theater you know the the uk thingy the british thingy but then um so i'm like i know a lot about this research but then when i'm like literally with the book open and I want to write down something, I feel as if I don't know anything. I can just see the visual stuff. But then when it comes to writing down, it was very difficult. So I had to find someone who could help me out. And you won't believe what Itya Daina did. She gave me her materials. She gave me a news, newspaper outs. And she literally gave me not materials in the sense, like not the ones that she had for her, for her own uh, research or for her own documentaries. She gave me the ones that she even wrote. She said you could you could use them, and I used all those materials as my own, and I gave that uh, thesis as my own. And it was not the whole thing, but <laughs> kind of, you know. So it's very weird for someone who is um, who helps you, even though that person doesn't know you. And so Ichi Daina is um, uh, she does uh, documentaries and all these things. So she her I think she's recently uh, she is working on Shumang Lila. For a new documentary that she's working on at the moment yeah and yeah and i've never had the op i've m i met her last year when i went home and i had like a small seminar for the um the same thing the sexual theater the sexual identity and in theaters and things like that so she had also come for this seminar and i did speak to her that day but everyone was so busy that i didn't have the chance to literally sit with her and thank her for what she maybe it's a very normal thing for her maybe she helps everyone out but then it ha it made a very huge it made a huge impact um in my life basically and i would say that the reason why i am here today with my research is because if she wouldn't have helped me out i know that someone else would have helped me out but then what she did for me was something um that i am very proud of today you know and she helped me with my research with her own papers with her own writings and then i when i went for my interview for my for my viva i said everything that she was supposed to say that i mean she's the one who who wrote that basically you know 
And yeah, and I got like, almost, I think I got 85 or something out of 100 for the research, for the thesis too, which was amazing. And I've never had the chance to tell her that, thank you so much, you know. Or and now you do. And now I do. <laughs> and right here in Pakistan, awesome. which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and right. yeah, and thank you so much for giving me the platform to thank someone who's helped me so much, you know. And she wouldn't realize that she's helped me so much, but then, yeah, it's because of her that my research is going places now. Yeah, so that's amazing. And yeah, thank you so much, Chedaina, for, for giving me all your materials <laughs> and helping me when I needed, you know, this particular, I mean, when I needed help, like, and I, yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah. All right, so now would be the time for me to bring up a picture. And there here she it is. goes. <laughs> yeah, so this is a picture of Diana Potsanbam. Uh, I'm going to read out what yep. uh, Susanna had shared. It is because of her I'm here today, proudly representing Manipur on an international platform in the realm of performance, arts, sexual identity, and acceptance. Um, so I hope that um, Diana would be listening. Yes, uh, <laughs> hopefully. And, yes, and, um, you know, our appreciation for her work, her contribution, her knowledge of Manipur um, and the impact what she had on you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting that, um, you know, I always look forward to, um, when you know when a participant comes up for our show for thousand and one i'm like oh, oh my god who are they nominating <laughs> and especially especially very excited about you know the second nomination um for you know manipur and which is why i started the show because i felt that uh, we know so less about uh, people in manipur who are doing so much exactly. right like yeah. So like how you're sharing about Diana Potsambam, um, you know, now we know more about her, about her knowledge and how, you know, she uh, has contributed in um, more academical background exactly. because exactly. knowing something is different and having that substance and sharing it with you, like you said, you know, you were a stranger at that exactly. time when you requested. Um, so we do have like amazing, amazing people in Manipur and it's my goal and vision to identify 1001 people of yes. Manipur where okay. we will have local role models and, you know, we'll have like, we don't have to refer to uh, inspirational people outside. I mean, we could yeah. still have that, but, you know, we'll have like 1001 people from Manipur who has contributed in different fields and areas where we can look up to. Exactly. So, Thagachari for Diana Putsangbam. And yeah. in fact, I have always wanted to interview her and bring her to our show. And I yeah. hope... Uh, <laughs> you can maybe would... mention me. <laughs> <laughs> bring her to the show. Yeah, and I hope that uh, she would, uh, you know, come to our show and uh, share her stories. And, oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Person. Right. All right, so moving on to the third one, wherein, um, you know, we want to talk a little bit about um, gratitude at the global level. Mm -hmm. So go ahead with your nomination. Um, at this moment, I feel as if um, when it comes to me having to show my gratitude to people, uh, especially on a global, global level, I think it would be to all the people out there who's struggling. And I wouldn't just say struggling, but who's going through a lot of stuff when it especially comes to sexually identifying themselves, I would tell them that whatever phase they are in right at the moment, either they are transforming or on the process of transforming or have already transformed or is feeling scared that they're going to be trans, they are, go they are going to transform and are in the position wherein they are so scared that what the society will think, whatever it is, I just want to tell them that they're very strong and really, really brave because and i would say that i wouldn't i know i always talk about how and my professor always always gets me uh, he gets crazy when i say normal people he said you don't say normal people everyone is normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so coming out as a homosexual i think it's it's okay and for a lot of people out there who's even watching this show or who also has a lot of knowledge about it and 
whatever the, the the situation may be you know i feel as if it is it is everybody's right to feel normal in the body that want they want to be they want to feel normal in you know so i and also i also feel that yes if you are born as a male and then you feel that you are like a female trapped in a man's body it is not my fault or it is it so if i am born as a woman and then i feel as if i don't i am not a woman i am a, i am a man inside and it is not my fault but then i am born that way you know so yeah so you cannot judge people um, based on that just mainly on that and then it is up to them to feel however they want to feel at the end of the day all of us are going to die and just when you have that 50 year span or 60 year span or whatever you don't have to literally fight against each other and you know call names and stuff like that and one good thing about the research that I'm doing right now is um when i tell people here in new zealand that in manipur when a homosexual is considers himself as we call like homos everywhere right it's like mm-hmm. homo palar homo this homo that and it's i feel as if it's normal but if you say that word in here or in anywhere in the anywhere else in the world it's like a it's it is so bigotry right and it's like you cannot say all those words but then when i said that it's normal in manipur it was so weird for them it's like <laughs> how come it is normal i said i don't know but it, i have i've heard that since i was like 2 or 3 years old and we've been living with all those things you know but yeah and especially in manipur when you see them it's like they are not it's not like india i know that i should not always contradict when i speak something and i need to be very careful about that but at least we don't have people begging in manipur which is amazing they are doing their own things they are in, into parlors they are into fashion world they are doing everything that they can to earn their own living so that the society don't talk bad about them so that they are accepted in the society so they are trying really really hard to fit into the society they are trying there are some transgender friends of mine who are so lady like and they scold me because i act like a man <laughs> you know, things, like, <laughs> things like that you know so when you see that see their struggle like ichi shanta kurai you know she is an amazing person and she's gone through so much okay she's basically gone through so much and to have her voice heard on a platform filled with um what do you say pastors or fathers you know basically and she is talking over there and no one is saying anything and she is voicing her opinion on transgender community of manipur that is amazing that is the bravest thing anyone would have ever done and you have jenny kurai from manipur and everyone claimed jenny as their mother because she is the one who helped everyone you know there were so many transgender people so many um homosexual people who were thrown out of their homes because they were in manipur, in manipur because they were gay so what happened so jenny gave them the platform they he, he she basically helped them to you know give them training with the hair cut hair cutting or makeup or anything of that sort and then gave them the life that they've wanted maybe like not see, the empowered life. them with exactly. financial independence exactly. with skills and exactly. you know exactly maybe not the life that they want but at least something that they're able to survive with you know especially in manipur and which is amazing so you have all these beautiful people in manipur and they are so brave and i feel as if mm, it is because of the things that they have been through that made them so strong and then they know that because they've been through all those things if they help more people they can empower more people and then maybe at the end of the day manipur will be like you know what we don't have just male and female we have basically human in manipur and right. also yeah so there are so many people out there in manipur and everyone is everyone is struggling and they have their own battle that's going through and i feel as if for anybody in manipur for anybody who is going through any of that uh, transformation sexually sexual transformation or anything of that sort anyone having any kind of problem i would say that kudos to you guys because you guys are the bravest people in the world and i am doing my and, and i'm kind of helping the society back at home too um with my research you're dedicating your research yes, for them yes. i will get the certificate i get it but <laughs> <laughs> but 
you know, to have money put on an international platform and that to the, the just the uh, sexual identity uh, thingy, you know, it, it's amazing because when I searched in um, the libraries and basically uh, everywhere, I only found one thesis from mm. some, uh, I forgot the name of the person. I think uh, his name is Imo Kaidem or something. Mm -hmm. And he did his um, PhD from JNU. And I found his research paper. It was, he had something with about Shumang Lila, but then he didn't. So I think his, basically his research was just on theater and performance and things like that, but not on sexual not identity. People, yeah, not so the it, people behind and yeah, you know, yeah, about yeah. their life. So, and yeah, so it is very difficult for me to find a literature or something that just focuses only on the transgender or the sexual identity issue, you know? But yeah, so I feel as if from now onwards, if there's someone out there who wants to do a research on the same field, maybe they'll be able to look up my thesis when I'm done, you know, <laughs> but not yet. But I can always help them out, you know. Yeah, but yeah, that's so, great. I mean, yeah. it's more exciting for you too, because, you know, there are no... And so exactly. you get to be the first person to go and interview <laughs> and get their, I you know, know. Get you know, get their experience yeah. and knowledge and share. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's and exciting. I remember last year I went for a conference and there, so they know about transgenders, they know about drags, they know about everything, you know, but then when I told them about Manipur, first of all, um, they didn't, they thought I was a Filipino. And <laughs> Okay, and after that, when I told them about Manipur, so I had to literally about my research. So I had like thirty minute um span to do the research to to do the um what do you say the paper mm -hmm. and the presentation, and then the whole so the fifteen minute was dedicated only to Manipur, and then fifteen minute was for my research, and so we had like a um, question and answer timing for almost about half an hour or something but mine went on for almost two hours because they kept asking me about Manipur and I had to illustrate more on Manipur because right. they thought that it was so weird that I don't look like an Indian and I don't talk like an Indian but then all the transgenders in the, the pictures of the cross dresses or the transgenders that I've put in my uh, my slides don't even look Indian because they only have the thing the, the notion right. of hijra in their head you know, mm. so when you say transgenders, they only think of hijra if you say you're from India. They're like, oh no, these right. are the lady boys of Thailand. It's like, no, these are not the lady boys. These are the the Pishabi or the Nupi Mandi of Manipur. So it was very difficult for me to let them know and understand. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, I got my uh, work done because now they know what is Manipur, where is Manipur, right. and how are the people of Manipur, you know, and things like that, basically. So it's amazing, yeah. Wow. All right. So let me share the picture which you have shared. And that was the only picture I could find with a lot of people in it. So, <laughs> yeah, in dedication to the transgender of Manipur. Yeah. And um, let me read out what you have shared about them. Every other person going through identity, sexual identity crisis inspires me. The people I met in my day-to-day -day life, especially for my research, are very strong and brave people, and my admiration towards them is something that will never shatter. That's so sweet. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no, it's really, it's really, really, really nice, and I am so happy um, because generally, when I ask, like, um, you know, nominate someone mm -hmm. uh, at the global level. Um, mm -hmm. This is, you know, one of the first time where uh, people of Manipur has been nominated oh, at wow. the global. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> so, so Thagachari to all the community uh, of transgender of Manipur. Um, and uh, I hope that, um, you know, they would come to our platform and also yes. participate in our show because uh, my goal is I do want to include, um, you know, all the community in every nook and corner of Manipur or for that matter, everywhere in the world um, who has something to say about Manipur. Um, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for uh, nominating and yeah. sharing a little bit about uh, the transgender of Manipur. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
All right. So I know that uh, I always, uh, you know, when I start the show, I try to <laughs> put the time and um, we always exceeded because, you know, we always talk about so many interesting things. I, I know. <laughs> But yeah, so it is time to um, end the show. Uh, but before we end it, I definitely, um, you know, would want to ask you if you have anything else, you know, you want to share before um, we end it. Yeah, um, I would like to first thank you so much for having me on your show and then giving me a platform where I can talk about myself, um, uh, basically my life a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, and about the research that I'm doing in the transgender um, section of the society and things like that, which is amazing. And I also want to tell you that finding the voices is an amazing approach, and especially Tagachari, because I keep watching your shows and then there are so many people, especially the last, the, I think the last one that I, I, I saw was this guy from, I forgot his name, but then this guy from UK who's doing like an NGO or something. But if, if it was not for you, no one would have known him. I mean, he's doing so much even if it's just 10 or 15 or whatever, or 10 or t I think 12 kids, but at least he's doing something, you know? So right. that counts. And then we would have never known if it was not for you. And, I'm t I, and I am so thankful to you that you're doing something which is an amazing, I know that you, was, you must have also gone through a lot of stuff to be able to come up to this particular platform that you're in at the moment but it is an amazing approach and it is so good because at the end of the day it is us who's going to be um, especially as the Manipuri you know who is like who's living in a different part of the world and we come as one and then we are like you know what I'm not jealous of what you're doing but you are doing whatever you're doing is amazing you know so yeah and you give us that platform you give us you give the platform to a lot of people out there in different countries struggling at the same time, um, you know, helping the community back at home, which is amazing. And thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your kind words. Yes. And um, yeah, it has been quite a journey for me. Yeah. It's been, you know, like five years. And I think the way Finding the Voices has, has shaped over the five years is driven by people like you, participants, right? So we find the need, like, well, okay, what do we need to do now? And I know. <laughs> every, every season is very, very interesting for me. And yeah, that's amazing. I'm very excited about the Thagachari show. Um, yeah, it is very interesting, like, how each show, you know, how we came up with the idea, because it's the previous show wherein I spoke to uh, different people, and I saw that, oh, my God, they're so awesome. And look at I know, right? Yeah. yeah aspiration and I see that they are not covered at all and we don't appreciate them right and you know everybody is um, so what do you call like um, if there is a bomb blast or I don't know uh, something is happening like there would be so many reports about that but not for know. you know all this inspirational things so I, I do know. want to create a lot of <laughs> that content is amazing. On, that is amazing yeah 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 so all right um with that we will end our um show today and um i definitely would want to invite everybody um as you can see right now we are today on the 15th participant and our goal is to have 1001 targetary identify 1001 people of manipur and talk about them no about them learn about them you know be inspired by what they do uh, so we have 986 more to go so i invite you to come over up in our show talk your heart out and let us spread our voices and come to together as a community um, so with that um, i am really thankful for taking the time and I'm so happy even Susanna is telling that you know like you being in New Zealand watching our show and you know bringing <laughs> our community together. I know that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. all right thank you. And thank you so much. In. Okay bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.